Hey there guys, welcome back to Garage 54. Today's video will be of the experimental educational variety. We've received quite a few requests. Obviously you're getting the same kind of weird ideas as we are. So here's what we're gonna do. You've seen us do a bunch of experiments with this here car. I can't stand seeing it parked here, fellas, for real. It's been here for too long. Anyway, here's what we're doing. Wow, it's really cold outside today. I wanted to film this with my hood over my head, but that way you can't see my face. So, to reiterate your idea, we've decided to pour boiling water onto the frozen windshield and see what happens. A lot of you know that even I myself bought such a car with a heat crack running down the bottom of the windshield. They say that these cracks appear as a result of remote starting your car after it sits around for a while. With the heater having been switched off, you tend to flip it on when you get into the car after warming it up. You get some warm air flowing and uh, due to the difference in temperature and inner tension on the screen itself. It just cracks after it starts warming up. It's a credible story, I mean, if I hadn't bought such a car myself, I wouldn't buy into it. But I've seen such cracks myself right above the heat vent. Anyway, let me tell you how this works while I clean this up. So here's my story. I went on a fishing trip once. We had minus 22 degree weather right before New Year. We made it to our spot and it just so happened that when we came out in the morning, Sergei Ivanovich started the car. Since we were in the village and we were dealing with a lot of Riva, he put up a blowtorch, warmed up the car, as in he warmed up the oil a bit. Then he fired it up, and when we got in, actually when we opened the door, we saw a 0.2 inch layer of ice on the windshield. Turns out he transports his nets and fish in the cabin, and all of the windows were frozen due to the humidity and frost. So somebody starts scraping the ice off, he laughs and goes like, dude, step away, you're doing it wrong. He grabbed the blowtorch and started defrosting the screen from the inside. The ice melted, obviously, and the water started running down the windshield. Meanwhile, it just didn't crack for some reason. Maybe because it was a Riva, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to carefully clean everything off. There's quite a bit of ice here, isn't there? Of course I've brought a kettle with me to the garage, and some clean water as well. I'll bring it up to boiling temperature, and then... Right now it's a tad below minus 4 outside. Maybe somewhere around minus 10, something along those lines. That should do. Anyway, we'll pour some boiling water and see how this glass reacts. Let's do this! So, what happens when you pour boiling water onto a frozen windshield? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So yeah guys, everything's ready. We've boiled some water. Here's how it's going down. We're keeping everything simple. I'll pour the water right onto the windshield. Clean off the remaining ice and see what happens. Let's give it a try, shall we? You can hear it crackling and popping. Voila! What gives? 
Anyway, as you can see, nothing happened. I mean, seriously, like nothing. That's kind of surprising, actually. That seems to be the difference between domestic and foreign glass. The former can take anything you throw at them. Right. Maybe we have a Porsche or a Bentley Park nearby. We can heat up some more water and pay it a visit. So yeah, guys, let's have a look at the results. The water probably cooled off a bit while I was bringing it here. But even if it's 208 degrees, we still have a huge difference in temperature. And I just don't get why the glass didn't crack. Maybe because we're dealing with a lot of... That's the only explanation that comes to mind. I mean, the glass on import cars does tend to break. Probably, I mean, I've never tried pouring boiling water onto them. Whatever, this screen can live for the time being. It seems to have fared pretty well. But we still have the rear window, haven't we? I reckon we try pouring some water onto that. I'm gonna have to clean it first, obviously. Since it is covered with a thick layer of snow. Let me just give it a quick clean. I've already fired up the kettle. Just waiting for it to get to boiling temp. Then I'll whip it out and give it a go. Hopefully we will see some sort of positive result and get some damage happening. Right, so we've got another boiling kettle going on. The rear glass is ready for action. It's covered with a bit of ice, which is quite normal. Let's have a look. Why this isn't working is beyond me. The glass on these ladas, my god! Are they indestructible or what? What do you know? You can see for yourself. You requested we pour some boiling water and uh, nothing's happening. Like literally nothing. Lada is one hell of a car. I'd happily pour some water onto my Mercedes windscreen, but I've literally just had it replaced. I caught what the glass repair people call a breadwinner. So when I called Yuri, by the way, hey Yuri, why don't you come down here and explain why they ain't cracking? Anyway, I caught a breadwinner which opened up a hole this big, so I had the glass replaced. I should probably wait about a year and then I'm ready to give it a go, because right now I'm not prepared to demolish a new windscreen. Anyway guys, we gave it a shot, you asked for it, and I made it happen. With zero results, even the rear Stalinit glass just shrugged it off. Here's what we're gonna try. We received quite a few requests for us to fill the cooling system with liquid nitrogen. And since they only sell it in big-ass containers, we'll definitely have some left over. If you're interested, here's what we can do. First, we'll try freezing the glass with some liquid nitrogen. We'll certainly see an absolutely ridiculous negative temperature reading, somewhere along the lines of minus 490 degrees, even if we get it down to just minus 150, and then splash some boiling water. I'm pretty sure it'll shatter into pieces. If anyone's interested, let us know. So hit the like button, and if we get enough thumbs up, we'll be repeating this experiment with some nitrogen. One more thing, guys. We see a massive amount of people posting the same photo every day in our public. This one. A lot of you want us to make an attempt at creating a working, running Asmobile, Ascar, or whatever you want to call it. You can think of a name. So yeah, a lot of people want us to make that happen. What have we got here? Basically, we've already got one half sitting right here. So if you're keen, we can find another car, cut it in half, weld the two halves together, install a few starter motors or electric motors of a different variety, since fitting a conventional motor won't be an easy task by any means. After that, we'll give it a go and see how that works out. If you'd like us to take another crack at it, let us know in the comments. I'll definitely make it happen, no worries. Anyway, that's it for today. Stay tuned, subscribe, make a few suggestions, comment, and see you later!